Hello everyone. In the previous lecture, we have discussed determination of 1D heat conduction equation. So this is the equation that we have derived. The equation tells us that it is 1 upon A dabba by dabba x of A dabba t by dabba x plus G by K and it is equal to 1 upon alpha dabba t by dabba t. So here we have not written dt by dx or dt by dt. Uh, why? Because this is a partial differentiation. In this case, temperature is variable along with direction or along with location as well as it is variable along with time. So that's why this is an unsteady heat conduction equation in one dimension. Now in the beginning of that session itself we had discussed that we need to modify this equation for our particular cases. In those particular cases area is the most important parameter which is going to play its role. So let us see how area affects the analysis of those particular cases. So the first case will be that of a plane wall. So we will consider the physical attributes then convert them into mathematics. So for the plane wall we know that area A is constant. The cross sectional area A which participates in conduction heat transfer is constant. So if we rewrite our heat conduction equation it tells us that this 1 upon A dabba by dabba x of A dabba t by dabba x plus g by k is equal to 1 upon alpha dabba t by dabba t. Now in this case because the parameter inside the differentiation bracket as well as outside the bracket both of these are constants so that's why this a can be taken out of the bracket and these two a's will now cancel each other. So what we get once they have cancelled each other so what we get is dabba by dabba x of dabba t by dabba x plus g by k will be equal to 1 upon alpha dabba t by dabba t. So this is differentiation of a differentiation. So that's why it gives us double differentiation. So finally the figure that we get is dabba 2t by dabba x square plus g by k is equal to 1 upon alpha dabba t by dabba t. So that's the governing heat conduction equation for a plane wall. But then there is a second case that we are we will also consider. So the second case will be that of a cylinder. Now what is the context in case of cylinder? The first thing that we know about the cylinder is that its area which is exposed to the conduction heat transfer does not remain constant. So this area is not constant. Why it is not constant? Because in this case this is not constant because in case of cylinder again and again we are emphasizing upon this parameter that area is dependent on radius. Area is a function of radius and in this case area is equal to 2 pi r l where r will be radius at that particular location. So we will substitute this value in our fundamental equation. I am going to write the equation once again for the practice. So the equation is 1 upon a dabba by dabba x of a dabba t by dabba x plus g by k is equal to 1 upon alpha dabba t by dabba t. So now here this a outside the bracket and this a inside the bracket it cannot be cancelled. We cannot cancel them because now we have some variable to be substituted over here. Also one more thing in case of a cylinder the directional coordinate will change from x to r. Why this will happen? Because in this case we are giving more emphasis on radial heat transfer rather than the axial heat transfer. So the directional coordinate will change to radial coordinate and that's why this dabba x the variation of temperature or any other parameter with respect to x it will change to dabba r. So this is the physical change that we are going to incorporate into mathematics. For a we will substitute 2 pi rl. So this will be 1 upon 2 pi rl dabba by dabba r 
of 2 pi r l daba t by daba r plus g by k will be equal to 1 upon alpha daba t by daba t so now in this case this 2 and pi these are constants both inside and outside the bracket so they will be absorbed length of the cylinder is also constant it does not change only the radius of cylinder may change with the presence of insulation or with the thickness of the cylinder material so that's why length will be absorbed only r will remain untouched so that's why because the differentiation is it uh, with r itself and that's why this r and this r will not be cancelled so that's why what we get is 1 upon r daba by daba r of r daba t by daba r plus g by k is equal to 1 upon alpha daba t by daba t so this is governing differential equation for one dimensional heat conduction in case of a cylinder in this case area the term of area has been replaced by r both outside the bracket and inside the bracket as well as directional coordinate has been changed then there is the third geometry about which we need to discuss it will be that of a sphere so by now it is a very much practice for us to consider all these three cases in sequence again in case of sphere the same philosophy applies area is not constant area is a function of radius but only the formula of area is different so in case of sphere area of a sphere is equal to 4 pi r square so r is the variable 4 and pi are constants this is the basic heat conduction equation 1 upon a daba by daba x of a daba t by daba x plus g by k is equal to 1 upon alpha daba t by daba t now let us substitute the values in it also in case of sphere as well the directional coordinate will migrate from x to r because in this case in case of sphere particularly you go in any direction you are going in the radial direction only so that's why this daba x will shift to daba r so now when we substitute the values in the governing heat conduction equation what we get we get 1 upon 4 pi r square multiplied by daba by daba r of a daba t by daba r so that is 4 pi r square daba t by daba r plus g by k is equal to 1 upon alpha into daba t by daba t so this 4 and pi constants 4 and pi constants they will be absorbed so finally you get the equation for sphere as 1 upon r square daba by daba r of r square daba t by daba r plus g by k is equal to 1 upon alpha daba t by daba t so you will observe that this is the one dimensional heat conduction equation for a sphere in this case the term of area has been replaced by r square both inside the bracket and outside the bracket and we have incorporated the physical changes like this consideration of area into the equation and finally obtained this equation now we will move on to the next possible cases of this the possible cases include the first one let us say because uh, we have discussed that this is a general heat conduction equation which means it tells you about so many possibilities which can exist so the first possibility is if the heat conduction my mistake if heat generation itself is zero then what will happen with the equation so the equation will be known as in that case it will be known as Fourier's equation it will be known as Fourier's equation and the equation will be written as 1 upon a daba pi daba x of a daba t by daba x plus g by k is equal to 1 upon alpha daba t by daba t then there is a second possibility what happens if we are studying the steady state heat transfer so if steady state is considered in that case 
the change in temperature with respect to change in time will be exactly equal to zero and such equation will be known as Poisson's equation. So that's why our equation will now become 1 upon a tabba pi tabba x of a tabba t pi tabba x plus my mistake I made a mistake over here this will become entirely 0 so but in this case plus g by k is equal to 0 then there is a third possibility if both heat generation rate is 0 and it is a steady state so tabba t by tabba t is equal to 0 then the equation will be known as Laplace's equation So that's why at that point of time the equation will appear like this 1 upon a dabba by dabba x of a dabba t by dabba x is equal to 0. So these were the possibilities with this governing differential equation in one dimension. Thank you.